So now we go to the Landau theory, which I will spend about, I think, some uh, 15 20 minutes on that. So, Landau theory is this saying that although it is largely phenological, but it be, be, uh, it's the beginning of the conceptual framework of understanding phase transition. Okay. So, read this, but also let me uh, in the meantime also let me briefly tell you. So, 1937 when Landau did the theory of phase transition, it is a general theory of phase transition and it paves the way for everything that followed. It is a very simple theory, incredibly simple theory and uh, but however, this generality that it allowed and the new concepts that brought in which was not there before. And one of the new concepts that Landau brings in, he just did, he asked the questions that I was asking here. How do I take the characteristics here in the old phase, which I know contain the key to for the phase transition. So, how do I do that? What are the way I go about incorporating this? So, he rightly uh, 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 now guessed that the way to do that that I need to have the, so I have the minima, I have the minima in the liquid and I have all the correlations here. So now if I can expand the free energy in of this phase in terms of free energy of all the characteristics of this phase, then I can look for a certain discontinuity. So that is of course ambitious. And it is the reason it does not fully work, but that is the one it is called the. Uh, so, uh, this is again uh, my favorite line. Some of the predictions are not quantitatively correct, but the main merit and the strength of Landau theory is its tremendous generality that comes with a simplicity that is unmatched, unmatched in theoretical discussions. And you will see that. But the reason I am preparing you for that, though it is a very simple theory. It opened the door for many theories and it is the generality that is absolutely mind boggling. So, what he did? After saying all these things, what Landau did, okay, let me write down the free energy of the new phase, free energy, F is the new free energy of the new phase in terms of a simply called Landau expansion, expansion in a Taylor series, in a Taylor series of, see people are all very perplexed for many years, decades. Nobody wrote down such a simple expansion, but Landau wrote down, this is what actually probably the uh, simplicity or go A or whatever is the genius. So, he expands, so this is the, when you expand like that, then eta is the order parameter. So, I am expanding free energy in the order parameter. In the old phase, order parameter is 0, so f equal to f naught. Now, my aim is to find a solution of the free energy in terms when the eta is non zero okay so this is the uh, search of a solution what are the conditions then where then the answer lies the answer lies as i said answer lies in this branch answer lies in this branch and where are these branches are going to all these quantities alpha a b c all of them are temperature dependent. This is explicitly put out for reasons I will uh, describe a little later. All of them are temperature dependent. Now, what are these quantities? How do I get alpha A, B, C? Exactly. You take the derivatives. So, that is the characteristics I was saying. We need the derivatives. And once you try to find the derivatives, you go a little deeper, you find the derivatives are in fact not only just specific heat or compressibility, but they are also given in a little higher level theory intermolecular correlations in the old phase, which we are not going to go. So, this is the famous Landau expansion. There are many other terms there. This when uh, you put the gradients here, delta eta term that becomes a Ginzburg Landau. And that is one of theory of superconductivity people use. Superfluidity, uh, uh, the uh, Ginzburg who got the Nobel Prize later uh, for this and many other things. So, now we start playing some games. So, these are first important things that are determined by derivatives of the free energy in the old phase. So, these are determined by the old phase. 
and we are trying to buy Taylor expansion just like we do how do we do a Taylor expansion. We always do Taylor expansion by go, going from known to unknown that is the Taylor expansion right interpolation extrapolation. So, we, so Taylor expansion always like we do f x plus a we do a Taylor expansion f uh, x plus then first derivative but evaluate it at x a. So, whole idea is that of going from known to unknown and known we know we are we are entitled to know everything about the old phase and then we are trying to do new. Now, first thing is that because this is a free energy minima because this is a minima here in the liquid phase this is 0. So, now it becomes uh, simpler that the free energy is uh, one term less. Next very importantly one quantity is done. Now, I make a distinction between first and second order phase transition and this is a very important. Uh, so, I will now uh, describe something else that is uh, coming here, but coming at a later stage. So, I better do it here. This is extremely important thing and essence important part of the Landau theory. Okay. So, in a first order phase transition, free energy surface behaves like that. This is against order parameter free energy. And I am lowering temperature towards the transition. So, this is the old my, my parent phase, this is the daughter phase, parent daughter, now parent and daughter become stable. Now, what is in my pressure uh, density, what is this point? Exactly, this is the coexistence point. So, this is the metastable. Characteristics of first and uh, first order phase transition that there is always a metastable phase. One of the major characteristics and what is the mani manifestation of the metastability? You, we see it all the time. What is the most important uh, manifestation or, or a signature of metastability? Hysteresis. You see in the presence of magnetic field, huge hysteresis. That is because system remains trapped. Even when this is stable, system is trapped here. That, that is one of the reason Another reason, even at coexistence, there is a large barrier in first order phase transition. What is the consequence of this large barrier in a first order phase transition? Gas to liquid, liquid to solid, or nanomaterials, whatever. Nucleation. You cannot spontaneously go over from one phase to other phase because it is a macroscopic barrier which is proportional to number of particles in the system. So, it must be new phase must be nucleated. Okay. So, two important characteristics of first order phase transition is A, metastability, hysteresis, B, it must be nucle nucleation. because there is a macroscopic barrier which so a system must be is like a winning a war you must get into the fort okay this is a first order phase transition what is happens is, so this is the landau free energy surface for first order phase transition what happened to landau free energy surface for second order phase transition like the order disorder transition like superfluidity now this is very nice and very nice this is what is the Landau theory is gives you a nice physical picture. This is low temperature. Now, I am increasing temperature or you can say decrease temperature whatever. You will see so uniquely different.
I with this is time I really miss a big board. This T equal to T C, this T uh, say less than T C, T near T C and then T greater than T C, let me see T greater than T C, T greater than equal to T C and T less than T C. So, there are the four diagrams. So, there is no metastability in a second order of restriction, there is no nucleation. So, as, a, as I go to the transition point, the systems, remember I told in the response function, second derivative are the springs that hold the system together. Here this uh, spring is compressibility or susceptibility or the specific heat and that spring slowly goes away. That is why you have infinitely compressible at critical point and the free energy surface becomes really broad and shallow in the uh, minima and th this is where things are diverging and just below, little below that you get the spontaneous symmetry breaking of the system. So, this is Landau provides this free energy landscape, the free energy provided this beautiful picture how a phase, first order phase transition happens and a second order phase transition happens. This is how first order what is shown here is first order, what I have drawn there is first order and the, so the, there is a huge change in going from melting is a case where there is no second order phase transition and there is a beautiful logic again Landau logic that um, in, a, in a gas liquid however there is a second order phase transition. This becomes narrow, you remember the isotherm, then this is the critical point, inflection point, this is Tc and so as you approach that then free energy surface be start become even in the minima start become flatter and then the whole second minima completely disappears and you get the, uh, uh, so this is the, the one that is shown there is the first order phase transition with metastability and then I will do the Landau theory in a minute and this is the flat and then this is the spontaneous symmetry breaking in a, uh, in a uh, second order phase transition, okay. Now, let us do the Landau theory quickly and so knowing that free energy surfaces are very different, Landau trivially now included this, he said okay. Okay, first thing I again mentioned that is an order parameter, that is why order parameters was introduced so that I can expand the free energy. Order parameter is the change, and you know the uh, free energy expansion is done, an expansion is done in Taylor expansion about a change. So, in Fx plus A, our Taylor expansion A is the order parameter, you are expanding around that, and so order parameter is the smallness parameter. Okay, that is number one. Second, uh, one now we going to do the second order, of a, if we do first order of phase transition, then this quantity B is non-zero and if B is non-zero, I, I, I can make B negative and by making B negative, I describe this transition and that is exactly the way uh, landau Dijan theory of liquid crystal was done, Dijan was given well price for 2 what, one is uh, liquid crystal and another is uh, polymer or 3 are semiconductor also. In these two liquid crystal and that, this he did the Landau theory. So, is it beautifully one can describe and it turns out I can do the calculations of B and in first order phase transition they are negative. What is an example? Let us do uh, the Van der Waals gas, I am take again and again. So, this is the Van der Waals gas, free, our, our famous Van der Waals and then this is a free energy for integrating this one, you get the free energy and I can plot the landscape, free energy landscape from Van der Waals. I can also do expand free energy in a Taylor expansion 
Van der Waals gives you exactly this what we discussed the other materials, these are material series. Beauty is that the second coefficient is this thing. Now, free energy is very, very uh, go over, you get a, key, a term, cubic term, you integrate that, get the free energy. This term becomes negative at a low temperature, simulating the phase transition, first order phase transition. And this goes to the cubic term goes to become small near the gas liquid critical point. That does not fully de describe this uh, um, uh, theory, but Landau theory is essentially Van der Waals theory, these are called mean field theory in the sense that I am uh, neglecting fluctuations, I am using a simply Taylor expansion to describe the, if I integrate that rho square rho cube that comes in. So, Van der Waals free energy is exactly Landau free energy, except I now have some little bit of ideas where R B, B and uh, B 2, B 3 are that, okay, okay, it already has them. Now, the strength of Landau theory is in providing a description of the second order in a, in a, in a trivial way. Now, second order phase transition here, there is a symmetry. The symmetry is that free energy is invariant. If it is 0, this plus, this minus is the same. This is called the degeneracy. Uh, so, if it is so, then my, this, con, this free energy, the condition often called the parity, a symmetry condition and then this becomes simple like that. This is very famous, you know, uh, particle physics, five fourth theory, many, many theories, you know, uh, K. G. Wilson himself did it. It has a huge impact on the, the enormous field of field theory, this, this, this Landau thing, that means it went in so many different directions, whole polymer is, I told you liquid crystal, everything is done in this language. This is more I like to tell that this actually gives you the language of the phase transition. They teaches you how to think about phase transition, how to think of free energy change, okay, and order parameter. So this is now simplifies, and uh, now Landau made this brilliant thing. He said, okay, A is a strongly temperature dependence. I assume A, T, this is the, not the Helmholtz free energy, this is constant A, and this is a universal language of uh, uh, Landau theory. This kind of expansion is the absolutely standard. Now you get, uh, so I make this, why do I do that? I did it because when T goes to Tc, so this is this term then, this term is the one that is the spring, that is the frequency, right? And told you that this is the response function, this we know will be specific heat, actually one over specific heat. But that, so this thing is going to be flat. So that is why he assumes that it goes to 0 as a T minus Tc. And then I solve for eta with that condition. Put this here, this is here. Now I go and find out this, take a derivative. When I take the derivative, I get eta equal to 0 always remain a trivial solution because this phase always remains a trivial solution. This is minimum here, but in maximum the same condition also holds. And then I solve that, I get this is the, so the order parameter, this is a remarkable prediction that order parameter has this non-classical dependence. That means even when, look at this beautiful thing, if Tc minus Tc is 0.1, I go below point 0.1, I am in this regime, I am going below the critical temperature. What is square root of point 0.1? 0 0.33, right. I go to point 0 0.01, what is square root of point 0 0.01? 0 0.1. What does it mean? This kind of fractional exponent means he is a huge dependence and this is the real hallmark of critical phenomena, this fractional exponents. This exponent is called alpha, it is a specific heat, no sorry, this is called beta because it is in terms of order parameter and beta is universally 0.3 or 1 by third close to. This is amazing, 
you do so many different systems, define the order parameter and consider the temperature dependent order parameter and you find the fractional exponent all, almost always 0 0.3, 0 0.32. That is why it captured the absolute the A of uh, imagination of scientists across uh, the discipline. This universality is a characteristics of critical phenomena and these are the called critical exponents, yes. No, what you have actually you have absolute value here and there are lot of these exponent beta above and lower called beta and beta prime and there have been lot of work on that and beta and beta prime are almost always the same. They might be slightly difficult but very difficult to do the experiments exactly very close to that. But experiments were known for a very long time. This is exactly exponent you find from Van der Waals theory also. These are called the, the, the Landau theory does not get correct exponent one third but it captures one of the essence that the, so eta is the change. So, eta will be if I go below this, uh, I come from here to here, then this will be the order parameter. So, what I am saying is that by giving change a small amount, the eta is going to change by big amount, okay. That is a similarity uh, that we talk about in order parameter. Okay. So, there are all these different kind of order disorder transition, isotropic pneumatic is very closely second order and uh, then gas liquid is the thing. So, going back to first order phase transition now like liquid crystals or Van der Waals describes the first order fairly well that then B is non zero anymore, it is the B that changes the sign. Now, what Dijan did in liquid crystal transition in uh, isotropic pneumatic, he noticed that the isotropic pneumatic is nearly second order though first order. So, he kept Landau theory, he kept Landau this part and then he also kept the B term and it, it developed a theory. Again same spirit, same phenology, nothing great but he all again captured the uh, describe the liquid uh, isotropic pneumatic phase transition in liquid crystals which is given here. I think this is what I wanted to tell the Landau theory and the free, the free energy landscape of Landau theory, then the critical exponents. So, there are some other critical exponents which uh, one, one should not, I, I do not like to uh, a that but the other critical exponents are the following specific heat. alpha, eta, uh, just a minute, I might be making something wrong. This is beta and uh, uh, specific heat alpha, uh, I should have had that. Um, then order parameter is a beta and uh, there is gamma, delta, a series of critical exponents which uh, oh, compressibility, yeah, compressibility goes as gamma, specifically with alpha. Uh, alpha is typically 0.1, beta is typically 0.32, gamma is typically 1.8. Landau theory predict uh, this is this is half, uh, Landau theory finite discontinuity here and this one Landau theory predict 1. So, Landau theory gets is uh, the value is wrong, but it does get the basic uh, physics correct. So, should I write it separately? These uh, CP, CP, or you can see these things CP, eta, and chi, and these are the exponents, critical exponents alpha, beta, gamma, uh, and as I said, they are universal. 
that means they are nearly the same across all the systems. Hmm. This is a good question. Van der Waals is a mean field, Ramakrishna Nimsov is a mean field, Landau is a mean field, all are the same at the end of the day. The reason is that when I expand that, These are the ones with guys working on phase transition, right, the day in and day out, huh? okay. Now, in all these things, if now let us consider gas liquid, simple thing. In a gas liquid near the critical point, what happens? There are regions which are liquid like. There are regions next to it which are gas like, large scale density fluctuations. You look at the density and now I look at the density as a fluctuations around the average density. In my critical row star language, critical density is again universal in near point 3, it is very interesting near point 3. I take that out and look at fluctuations, then what do I see? I see there is a region like here where is my origin, I draw like that, there is a large value, then after that it becomes negative, then become large, then becomes negative. I find like that. So delta rho, this is liquid, this is gas, this is liquid like that. Need not be periodic, there is not periodic, but there are, so what are these now? These are interfaces. What does interface bring in? Bring in surface tension. It an extra energy. Where is that in Landau theory? It is not. So, Landau theory has to be supplemented by and lo and behold, you have one of the most powerful theory of the world, this Ginsberg Landau. So, Landau, Van der Waals does not have this extra term, which is we call fluctu effect of fluctuations. So, mean field theory does not have the effect of fluctuations. You have to go to Ginsberg Landau to do that. That we all do when you do surface tension. In my book, we have dealt with it at length. Surface phenomena, nucleation, these are one of the main are the topics in my book which are not dealt in either in physics or in chemistry books. No, you do not have the coexistence. You have no, you do not have coexistence. You have a point, see coexistence is a line. So, as I drew there, that line coalesces, it becomes a point, point of singularity. Here, this is where large fluctuations are going on, gas like and liquid like in the magnetic phase transitions, you have the up spin and down spins and uh, you know, or ordered and disordered. That means one place is ordered followed by a disordered region. So, these are the, uh, then the order goes away and it becomes fully disordered. So, the coexistence, so this is a uh, flat free energy interface. There is no, they are, they are, are inside it, gas like and liquid like, but those are microscopic or mesoscopic domains. They are essential and ingredient for the fluctuation, large scale fluctuations. We call the exact language is large scale fluctuations. But those large scale fluctuations are affecting the thermodynamic properties, but there is no macroscopic interface. This is a very important question that you asked that the and the very essence of a critical phenomena. And so one I go over, take care of those fluctuations in, the, in this term, and then the, a huge amount of difficulty that comes in cannot be solved, and that is where comes an important way how to go beyond next step and that was done by, first thing was done by Kadanov by, he said how the, he introduced how the length scale diverges, that is called Kadanov transformation. There is a beautiful book by Shankang Ma, dynamical innovation book, dynamical innovation, dynamics of critical phenomena. He described it beautifully Kadanov and there is a wonderful review article for high school students essentially, but first year PhD students called. Uh, Mattis and Kadanov, Physics Today, 
1979 or 78. Wonderful. That's the best of critical phenomena that I know of. Kadanov and Matisse or Matisse or Kadanov. Both were at Brown and they wrote together and I, 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 we got the, we got the preprint. Everything was done in one dimension which is done that particular article almost in toto in my book, the critical phenomena. So, doing that was done step by step. Katanov did the Katanov transformation says how to treat the emerging correlations, long length correlations that happens things become correlated over long say because the fluctuations become correlated that because here if I have a liquid like regime then I have a of a gas like regime. This is called fluctuations getting correlated. Then the one of the most powerful theory of modern times K.G. Wilson in 1970 or 71 did this innovation group which is lot of fun, lot of fun to that. I did that once I was happy to, I was very lucky in Chicago to work with one guy called Yoshi Ono. We did the innovation group calculations of polymers. Um, but it is amazing theory, okay.